those who don't know, Ronin are very well known for their highly aggressive, high speed, um, no holds bar daring plays with players like, of course, as you said, uh, Ricky Tan um, and uh, Silent as well, uh, and uh, Alola, all of whom are known for taking great risks and uh, ke keeping up with board states that other players might might blink at and they don't blink. Yeah, tend to make a lot of risky plays, but strategically, you know, logically risky plays just to get oh. the upper hand. So yeah, they're great players nonetheless. Let's see. I mean, today Duvon was the best of the of the set from this tournament. 47 tournament players entered the ring, and these are the last two standing. Of course, Wobbles and Shiz will be playing for that third, fourth place match. A little bit difference in the pants and prize payout today. So let's see. Oh, now I'm remembering. Okay, so just like yeah. aggro, yeah. aggro, move flank, Valash, fire coys, Oshirara, the hedgen. Yeah, look good. This is the score it's possible to be. Like, I, I can't think of what I would change in this lineup to make it more aggressive outside of, I don't know, maybe a Barnshi? But where would you <laughs> even put it? Like, no, yeah, I think I, I can't see one right now. I mean, you got Gialis, you also got Volfi. I don't really know how to make it more aggressive. Um, Yeah, name attempt him, Chad. Name attempt him that would go well. But I think this team, obviously, he's in the finals for a reason, doing very, very well. And Subaki maybe doesn't like playing against him as Shook here, looking to ban it. It is the only attempt him that resists his toxic temp, so maybe that has something to do about it as well. That's not a bad shout, actually. Given how much Tsubaki has been leaning back on the Nidrasil and the Noxolotl, two temps that I expected to be a bit more answered in this tournament with uh, Firekoish running around to the degree that it has and the number of other sort of neutral into toxic threats that we've seen. But Tsubaki's really proven us wrong with some very hard to break tactics. Yeah, we'll see him, man. I love Hedgen. Hedgen just has so much coverage. Of course, it does have a lot of weaknesses, but the Generify nullifies quite literally all those weaknesses. So mm. yeah, just digital pressure for the melee Temptems, fire pressure for those natures. Uh, yeah, Hedgen, one of the best Temptems from the new Cyping Crew update. I've said that again. I'll say it again, or I said it before. I'll say it one more time. Let's see who Duvon wants to pair it up with. Maybe expecting... Uh, Something like one of those toxic, actually into a hedging. Hmm. Uh, I kind of like the Valish here, excluding the fact that we still have uppercuts that it could be facing. Gallus doesn't feel too bad, actually. Uh, the only thing that I can see that really hates it is like, um, okay, no, he goes for the Valish, which if this is a special attacker, do we remember this was physical or special? I feel like we saw it in Neko's game. Didn't he go for a madness buff? I feel like it oh, might be it special is. attack. Wait, wait, wait. We might be mixing this up with Shizanix's. Very true. <laughs> we did have a bit of a long day today. Uh, we'll find out. Nice and early turn one. If he goes for a base jump, of course, it's physical. If he goes for a crystal spike, of course, it will be special. So we'll see from nice and early. Well, there we go. Okay, Skata Volt. Thunderstrike into the hedging. Fire Tornado into the Valash. It has good coverage for that turn one. Of course, it's going to take a little bit of turns to get that fire attack online. But yeah, Scatterbolt yeah. looking kind of good into Duvon's team. Yeah, and it's also a massive Kinu target. You get more defensive buffs on that thing after the half full procs. And alongside the Baton Pass, you can revitalize that thing back up to t back up to peak very quickly. If Duvon doesn't keep that in check, it could very well be one of the keys for Tsubaki's victory. Yeah, like we said, the, I mean, against two Crystal Temptons, Fire Tornadoes will do a lot. The Thunderstrike into the Digital, Thunderstrike into the Oshiara as well. So we'll see. I mean, Scatterbolt looking quite good, but this is it, ladies and gents. We've made it. Everything leading up to this moment right here, it is the final. Tsubaki-chan making it, battling all the way through. Six rounds of Swiss, uh, quarterfinal, semifinal, same goes for Duvon. One player will come out victorious and be crowned the Airborne Archipelago Qualifiers number one champion. Let's go ahead and find out who that champ is going to be. You guys place your bets. And hey, I'm going to take a sneak peek of who you guys believe in chat is going to win. Oh, what, what are the odds like? 
It looks to be 60% Subaki one more time, 40% Duvon. So exactly the same odds. Let's see if it pans out the same way or does Duvon a little bit too aggressive for Subaki's liking. We have seen in the past uh, more aggressive players manage to break through some of Subaki's plays. Like the biggest problems is you got to prize that open and actually catch him on the back foot. And, like. You, you can't give Tsubaki space. Otherwise, he's just going to reposition, consolidate, and find a way to get back into the game. As we saw in the Wobbles games, where the moment Wobbles let up the pressure, he was just like, okay, cool, I'm fine again. So not too bad. Of course, as you said, the uppercuts do go on Velash, but oh, reactive bio on Velash. That is some nice tech. I believe that is the first Velash we've seen. Of course, I didn't get to the honor of seeing Duvon with this Velash. But yeah, reactive out, increasing by 15% and now nullifying it. Which, you know, the uppercuts won't be doing double damage. And Madness buff is online. Let's yep. see how much this is going to do. Yeah, no, you were very right indeed. The Madness buff is there and that's looking very frightening for a lot of Tsubaki's team. Now that we've got a Valish that can, alongside the pressure from Hedgen, like this is going to be picking up KOs pretty easily if you ask me. Yeah, I mean, whichever part he targets, I mean, Digital Plasma Beam into both of Tsubaki's Temtem plus the Crystal Spike will bring whichever point he chooses down. The question is, where does Tsubaki want to swap? Does he want to double swap? I mean, he has Ninja Seal Noxalato in the back line, but a Hellfire is online just in case. So let's see, Kinu does retreat. Skydivol does come in, maybe expecting a Crystal Bite in that direction. Let's see. Uh... Yes, we do see the pressure is going onto the Mashook as it's a double in there. The Crystal Spikes comes down alongside the Plasma Beam, but it's just not enough. The Uppercut comes in and it's not super effective anymore. And even after the burn, which does, of course, I believe, what, 6.5%? It's not as much as Poison at all. It's, it's, I believe, half of what Poison does. Yeah, exactly right. So I think it ends up being, exactly, yeah, 6.5, 6.25, same difference. But man, I was almost certain the only thing that saved that Mashuk there was the Kinu buff. Without that Kinu buff, 100% the Mashuk falls there. But either way, not falling there that turn. Hedgen Plasma Beam goes first. It should be able to clean up there. Subaki, does he want to save the Mashuk for maybe the Wolfie? Wolfie's going to outspeed it either way. So I think this Mashuk just 100% doesn't really have enough to do. Let's see what Subaki yeah. decides. Uh, I think he's got, like, he's still got the Noxolotl and the Nidrasil in the back for Volfi. Uh, he's got more than enough things to take care of the playground. Now, that said, I think that it's a good thing that uh, Duvon brought it out right now because it's definitely his best tool against Scaravolt, which we can see is just picking up buffs. So oh. the Thunderstrike comes down. Oh boy, that just one shots Hedgen. Um, one other really cool thing about uh, Half Full is the fact that that's an immediate buff to your special attack, meaning you can really flex, even with not as much investment, the uh, special attack of Scaravolt. Yeah, that was impressive. Plus one special attack, enough to take down the Hedgen in a single blow. And man, he kind of needed the Hedgen for the Nidrasil. Needed that Fire Tornado there. I mean, Velash still a good answer in terms of just raw damage. Move flank as well, Gialis as well. So he's not out of the woods just yet. Or, you know, without an answer just yet. So we will see. I mean, Hedgen going down, that's kind of big. So first Temtem on the side of Duvon does go back to that Temp card. Mashuk almost down on the back line for Subaki. But yeah, first kill goes in favor of Subaki. Can he keep this momentum going? It's kind of always... even as it stands. Mm, it's always a bit jarring when a Tem like uh, Hedgen, which you want to be delivering value all the way through the game, just gets one shot like that. And I hope that this doesn't shake up Duvan's strats too hard into this. Like, he's got the move flank that's more than capable of throwing momentum back into this. Uh, my only concern is how is he dealing with the Kinu? Yeah, right. Just... Of course, Velash is a good answer, but let's see. Okay, Plague. So, Subaki just reading the Plague coming in, swapping into the Ninja Soul, eating it perfectly. But now it's trapped. Can Duval punish the Ninja Soul while it's trapped in here? And never mind. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, this was what I was worried about. 
is that this this king is delivering value i was concerned that it might be throwing some neutral attacks around but instead it's just uh as you said with the valish around it's just going to be more than capable of buffing up the nidrasil which as we saw in previous games has been such an asset for tsubaki as he just like sits back bark shields and it's just like yeah no what what are you gonna do yeah, speaking of Bark Shield, I wouldn't blame Tsubaki for pressing that right here. Buffing up Noxilato and Ninja Soul don't feel that bad. However, he has to be careful. I mean, even at plus two defense, a Goring still going to do quite a number, but not enough. I think Ninja Soul in a solid position at 60% HP. Wolfie can't really do anything to the Ninja Soul, so it just relies mm -hmm. on this move flank. So maybe you could go for a Bark Shield because at the same time, the same answers for Nidrasil would be the same answers for Noxalato. So if you buff up that defense, as you mentioned earlier, a little bit weaker on that defensive side, Noxalato maybe carries the game for Tsubaki as well. No, you're, you're very right. My One other thing here is that the nerf to execution, taking it from its threshold being 40% to 30%, means that if Duvan's relying on that as one of his ways to take down these walls in front of him, it's going to be harder for him to reach those points without really pushing hard. As we can see, he's brought in the Gallus here to like try to get a bit of that as he's uh, throwing some damage in on the Noxalot as well. But the Madness buff's going down. Sure, it brings it down to 44%, but we both know that that makes it a lot harder to take down and half of Mooflank health just vanished from this narc hit yeah and that could be a secondary narc hit the following turn noxalato also has that technique online is it as heavy hitting as ninja soul probably not but he has a little three percent wiggle room to work with so maybe still enough of course the double up would do some wonders but i'm wondering here is the goring plus a c by enough i think it'll be enough for the noxalato possibly not enough for the ninja soul so that's something subaki has to be considered of a double up with the priority moves not too priority but these temptums are fast as you mentioned Dubon, oh dear. he's just playing aggressive here so that's the double up how does subaki want to eat it and maybe execution but as you said yeah. it's only 30 percent so i don't know if you can do the damage there we think that a crystal bite onto the uh, nidrasil or a hook kick would do enough to bring that down into the 30 percent range because if so if that's what duvan has got calking then like maybe maybe there's a chance for him to start breaking through here again yeah you're absolutely right execution is a one prio technique so that would be going last so yeah that's something to consider either duvan wants to go fast crystal by goring or he wants to guarantee the kill with something like that execution and yeah, you know, he has to take away, what, 30% with the Crystal Bite or even less because Execution does a little bit more damage. So yeah, pick your poison, Subaki has to call it right. Where is Duvon attacking? All right. So instead, we see the fake out as Valish hits the field instead. Um, both players are repositioning here as the Nox was looking a little low there as well. Getting them a shook out, trying to mirror things and take the hit from the sea bite because you don't you don't want that just coming willy-nilly onto one of the things that you're solidly buffing trying to keep in the back for that volfi which otherwise can kind of tear through things and hey quarter did you catch what the item gialis has i love it you know toxic oh. has been such an issue gialis is wearing the aloe vera 15 percent additional damage on toxic temptems no wonders he's found a lot of success in this toxic heavy meta here. This, yeah, no, this makes a lot of sense. Uh, I've been seeing people diss on aloe vera and I'm kind of surprised that I didn't see more of it. Uh, it it's of course, that 15% damage boost is no joke. We've seen how much even a 10% damage boost on specific things can change so many calculations. And yeah, no, that, that might put a bit more of a chill into Tsubaki's uh, heart right here as he's trying to work things out obviously the scaravolts hit the board and it's more than capable of throwing pressure back into duvan's front lines here but um is it gonna be enough yeah the question here i can't remember off the top does scaravolt have a fire tornado online i can't recall how many turns it stayed on the board before because that's the biggest question duval has to consider Ooh. is fire tornado online it came in on I the only swap I only think it's been here for like two turns. I don't think it's got the hold up for Fire Nato. I could be wrong with that. I haven't been keeping count. Yeah, same here. So we'll keep an eye on it. If I mean, if it has it, Duvon has to swap out definitely that Valash. 
Or hey, if Tsubaki wants to read it and has it online, Gialis is threatened out as well. Oh man, this God of War looking like quite the MVP against Dubon's squad here. Yeah, uh, the big, the big frightening thing here for Duvon is what, what precisely does he have to eat a fire nade? The Mooflank takes it neutrally, but Mooflanks don't like taking hits like that. Volfi's got the special defense for it, but that's also still neutrally, and you're also staring a toxic ink in the face. This is kind of looking like he has to just grin and bear it, and just accept the fact that one of his Thames might be going down right now. Yeah, maybe just bear it, as you said, and just double up into that Nidrasil spot. So here we go. It wasn't going to be Nidrasil eating the damage. Let's see if Noxalato can take it. So Crystal Spike, 44%. Oh, down to 4%. So, oh, in the camera. <laughs> Crystal Spike, oh. way too strong. Yeah, just bumped us up a little bit there. This is actually quite a fortunate thing for Tsubaki. The fact that it didn't go down that first Crystal Spike means Scaravolt just avoided a world of hurt. And the Fire Tornado was indeed up. Uh, yeah, no, that's a dead Valish. That, that just goes straight down from that. Uh, the half fall being more than enough alongside whatever investment that was to just eviscerate the uh, uh, Crystal Badger right there. You know what? This isn't necessarily looking too bad for Duvon either way, though. He did he, he did lose his, that, his main carry with that Valash. But if Mooflink and Gialis with that Aloe Vera are able to deal with Hydra... I'm pretty sure Volfi with 4x damage with those Dust Vortex will be able to single-handedly take down the Scatter Volt. So that's the job for Duvon. Move flank Yalis. If they're able to take down Nidrasil, I think Duvon has it. If those two Temtems can't take Nidrasil down, I believe Tsubaki takes this game number one. Actually, now that you mention it, what's stopping Duvon from just hard focusing into the Scatter Volt early? and just ensuring that the Volfi gets value while it can, while it's at full health, especially since from what I hear, Dust Vortex is up. Oh, is it? Wait, wait, it's not up. Volfi hasn't hit the board, did it? It's at 100, 100. It hit one time. Oh, if it's online, then yeah, you have to bring it out now for sure. This is the final two times remaining. So yeah, I did not see Volfi hit the board. It was at 100. So if it did come in on a swap earlier, yeah, even though it's that plus two special defense, we're talking about 4x damage, effective into fire, effective into electric. So Volfi might have enough to just take it with a single attack if he knows the calcs. I mean, if you if you feel like it's kind of close, you got the double with Gialis. But if you could save that attack onto the Nidrasil, might be a little bit better, of course. So let's see. Duvon, Dust Tornado. Oh, okay, for good measure, for good measure. Let's see. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think you can afford to mess around with a Tem like Scaravolt. We saw how many buffs that thing was getting up. Uh, getting that double in early, like, you can afford it. Especially since now there's only the Nidrasil left. This is a really bad spot for Tsubaki. I, like, I, I don't think a Nidrasil can take down three Tems, especially when one of them is an Aloe Vera Gallus. Yeah, especially with the resistance trait and the team elusive. So things like allergic spread won't be as effective as they would otherwise. So it is that plus two defense, but Plague will put a hamper onto that stamina there. So 50% additional consumption on Nidrasil's attacks. And Toxic Ink, Gialis. And Gialis looks like he rested this turn. So ready for the heavy hitting Crystal Bite. And might be going yeah, down to a single Narco hit after that. But hey, I think the damage is done. Mooflink in the back line could do the rest. This is looking like a GG. Duvon game number one. Very impressive. But with no clothes, too. You know, naked is the style here. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, uh, Duvon showing us that you don't you don't have to look fancy in some like cool expensive outfits to be a high placing tamer here today. Uh, cosmetics or no, he's just coming and swinging. And yeah, no, it's it's gonna be a war of attrition, but the problem is like with the plague support from Volfi alongside everything else, I, I don't see how Tsubaki can get a leg back into here. There's just too much to take down. As you say, it's game one for Duvon. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Volfi can continue that plague pressure. If Nidrasil wants to do anything like a narco hit, he's gonna have to overexert and pretty much kill himself. So let's see, Goring does come out, bringing it down to 13.9%. The plague for the overexertion. Does Tsubaki go down on his own terms? I think he is. So that is GG. It gets the kill though, so save some TMR. <laughs> yeah, 
Guy's a warrior and uh, maintains good form, as you say, by by taking down as many opponents as possible. But Duvon definitely takes that first game in a stunning fashion. Well, hey, we might get some answers here. Let's go ahead and join these guys for game number two of our finals. Let's see the teams. And then I believe we could recall off the top of our heads. Let's see. Let's see. But I think you're right. Not guys for the side of Subaki. It was not guys. Or we'll see. I think we will get a much better idea once we get the full yeah, lineups in our face. Once we see it, it's going to be like, oh, how could I forget this? It's always the way it winds up being. Oh, man. That's, this, these have been bracing battles all the way through Top Cut. Like, it's this is what I love about a new patch and new tools is people are so innovative with the way they take advantage of things. The reactive vial plays, for instance, very interesting. And it was the Mashook. Very true. We said because of the toxic pressure, the only Tempton that resists those toxic ticks. So yeah, we'll see. Does he ban the Mashook? He kind of has... I mean, you know, he had an easy... Not too easy, but he had an easy time taking a care of Wobble's Mashook. So maybe the Wolfie ban a bit more valuable. Maybe the Volash or the Aloe Vera Gialis feels kind of good too. The Hedgen was a little problematic earlier on too. So we'll see Subaki try and be adaptive here. And oh, switching up oh. to the Temtem that we didn't even get to see too much of. So the Fire Koish will get banned here. That's interesting. I'm assuming that he bans this out so that way he doesn't have to worry as much about the threat of an Oshiara lead, for instance, because that's one thing people have been leading a lot with alongside, say, uh, uh, obviously your classic cat to play of like Valash Fire Koish. This frees up a lot of Subaki's openers for that. But we are seeing Mashuk Hedgen come in in its stead, which does in its own way kind of threaten out Kinu turn one. It's so weird being able to say that now. I'm so used to Mashuk being horrified of Kinu turn one. But now yeah. with Wastewater and a Plasma Beam, it's like, oh man, this, this little sprite doesn't want to be here. And hey, Subaki-chan did such a fantastic job earlier with the Kinu Yaller, but that didn't end up uh, spelling it all, of course. So we'll see. Does Duvon has what it takes to take down this incredible duo of Akinu Yaller. And I was just about to say, if you don't pick up the Skada Volt, I believe we will get the ban. I was almost thinking Kinu into Skada Volt there with that big boy Thunderstrike on the Hedgen. But I guess he wanted to guarantee the Yowler for things like that Gialis, Velash, and Move Flank and Volfi. So I could definitely respect that decision as well. Mm -hmm. One of the things I like is just how versatile a Temskara is. Like, uh, we've seen a lot of half full plays here, but its other trade is also very interesting to see in the form of Good Friend, a redirecting uh, mechanism that is not something you usually get to see outside of, like, you know, your custodian. Still, though, going back to this, it's a very breakneck draft with the to the toxic trio that's been carrying Tsubaki to victory uh, picked up on his side and a Valish, Volfi, and Mooflank. So just an aggro core out from Duvon. Is it going to be the same style of game as we saw last time? Or is Tsubaki going to be able to slow things down and play things the way he wants to? Yeah, everything we get answered here in game number two. Duvon, one more game and he will be our champion. Tsubaki needs two of those games. But hey, Subaki off to a good start. Of course, the key new protector buff already procking in. So, Shung Gustus looking to maybe turn one show off to start things off hot. But as you said, a little plasma beam wastewater onto that key new spot doesn't feel too, too bad. Of course, Subaki could swap to one of his toxic temptems to eat it quite well. If it's Mashook, he still takes some double damage from that digital, however. I like the Noxalotl swap for that a lot because that just eat. We've seen how well that eats wastewater, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't care too much about a plasma beam. Uh, one thing, incidentally, about these sorts of sets that we're seeing out of Hedgens, uh, I've seen some people try to take more advantage of things like uh, harmful microwaves out of that because normally it's one prio, and of course, got to go fast, just jacks that up no matter whether you get synergy or not. It's got a higher base power, but we do see the Nox come in. The plasma beam does sting a bit, and instead, we see a wastewater down on Chungustus as the damage is split and the show off still goes down yeah nice plays so it looks like duvon just covering both bases uh, identifying the kini swapping out nice and early as it was most likely going down if it stayed in but duvon placing a lot of the chips on it, that kini swapping out so just about 25 percent damage on the nox law but wait a second man the one little plasma beam brought it down to 68 that's not too bad I mean, yeah, no, the plasma beam still hurt it more than actually I expected either. Um, 
it looks like it really needs more setup in order to be able to deal with this kind of aggression. Hedgen's uh, stab from that really paying off as the wastewater comes down as well. Just expect this looks like that was covering the Kinu swap just making sure that he keeps Tsubaki honest and stops the sort of stuff that we saw in the Wobbles games where he just kept swapping it back and forth and back and forth. Yeah, that would have been quite brilliant to catch the Kinyu on the swap, but hey, Savage Suplex still doing a number on that Mashuk despite not having comebacker. So hey, best of both worlds, you don't give Yala the comebacker, but Yala is still such a heavy hitting temp to him at plus one attack, 50% increase on that Yala. Bringing the Mashuk down to just one more attack, it will go down. Ashi Dashi, however, that's melee on melee damage, so that will be half effective. That might not be enough for the Mashuk. So Yowler, what does he have in store? Maybe onto the Hedgen for damage, but this Mashuk, you don't want to get it too carried away. Maybe goes up to plus one attack or plus one more attack. Hmm. You know, there's a couple of people in chat that are making a very interesting point, which is that exhaust really hurts tireless Mashuk. Like those stamina costs being, I believe, what's it? It's like a times 1.5, right? Mm -hmm. That's actually massive when you turn that into the HP calcs instead. Like that means an uppercut here is probably going to bring this Mashuk down to like, what, 18% or something like that. That's way more than you actually want to be spending. Um, even then, though, the fact that Tsubaki got tranced here, I think, is a real hard time for him for exactly the reasons you said. Like it's kind of wasteful trying to throw an Oshi into this Mashuk when you want to be clicking, I don't know, moves that resist less, but I don't think you want to be focusing the hedge in here. Yeah, nothing super effective. So this is one of those tricky plays where you just have to try to do as much and AKA little damage because you're not going to get a lot of damage done, but damage is damage just like those toxic matchups. You just have to do the deed. It all starts to add up nicely at the end. So let's mm -hmm. see, Subaki Noxalato is sleeping for the time being. Does Hedgen want to go into the Yowler? If so, Yowler comebacker trade with a big boy Ashi Dashi might be heading its way, but let's go ahead and see. Okay, this might be the Kinu swap this time. Looks like you were right. The Kinu swap does happen and the protector goes down onto the Yowler. Is the Hedgen there with any kind of a response? My next question here. It is just another plasma beam. It's just throwing those suckers out and the hibernate comes down on Chungustus' side. It didn't really take much damage to begin with, but that's got a stamina right back up there. Uh, definitely looks like Duvan's just saving that for last and just trying to take down everything in the other slot, which I think is a very good call here, given what we've seen previously. Yeah, you know, sometimes it doesn't always work out the way you want it. Ignoring Yowler, a little bit different than kind of like ignoring your old school Cerneves, ignoring your Sakus. Those guys don't really pack the same punch as this Yowler. So, I mean, you don't, you do ignore that comebacker trait, but we'll see. I mean, Duvon doesn't want to ignore him the entire game unless he can get away with it. But Yowler's just a temp and you can't ignore for too long. Or, you know, back to back Savage Suplex, you know, every other turn Savage Suplex. That's easily 50% damage on every single Temtem Duvon has. So he has to be kind of careful of that as well. One oh, thing. Yeah. If, if this becomes a repeat of the games that we saw earlier and we get start seeing a plus three Yowler on the field that can just delete Thames with a flick of its wrist, then that's going to certainly be a problem for Duvon. Uh, I, I think that you're very right in that balancing and measuring your attention in this kind of a board state is deeply important as an aggressive player. You can't stop, but you have to make sure that you're pointed in exactly where you need to be. Yeah, and of course, those hibernates feel a little bit bad when you do some damage on Yowler and then he just recovers it back up. One thing I want to point out, did the Plasma Beam do at least that 32.6%? I want to say it was close. Because then Tsubaki, of course, has to swap Kinu. If it could live, at least you can get a final beta burst onto move flank. Does Kinu want to stay in? No, it does not. Let's see who's going to bring in. Uh, okay, Nidrasil coming in here. This feels risky given it's sitting in front of, well, a Tem that has not clicked Fire Tornado yet. But it is just another Plasma Beam. Tsubaki read it right, and it's down to 42%. The Suplex is coming down. Hedgen is still standing. Not too bad. Does go it does get those ticks of overexertion right there, but able to get off one final attack. And I believe, and man, Mooflin getting out of hand as well. Plus two speed. Mm. And yeah, fire tornado online right now. And the only good temptation to eat it will be that box room Mashook. 
So yeah, Subakin is still not looking in a bad position. It's swapping out very, very fantastically. So Hedgen maybe with another digital attack to try to catch the Mashuk on the entry. Unless he wants to call the Narco hit coming out from the Ninja Soul onto the uh, move flank. But I don't think it's too likely. So hey, Hedgen will hit the back line. And now that Ashi Dashi is offline, Valash is coming in here. Yeah, no, I feel like this was an appropriate thing to do. Like, you got to conserve your hedging, given it does so much into so many of the different things that Tsubaki has in the back. Now, granted, I say this. Have you noticed how much Nox has been regaining its health in the back? Like, it was down to 30%, and it's just been sitting there with its good regen going right back up into the 70s. And now it's got that plus two special defense. I don't know if it's going to be as easy for Duvan to deal with. Uh, we don't have the aloe vera gallus this time. We don't have as many immediate techs towards toxics. This could be a little bit more challenging for Duvon to pressure if he doesn't keep things up in the right way. And now that Hedgen's off the board, we don't have to worry about this. Uh, we don't we don't have to worry about the fire tornado, even though that Nidrasil is looking mighty low. Yeah, very, very low. A simple seed dust will take it down. However, Valash wants to stay in. That is a heavy Oshi Dashi staring him down. So that is something to be considered of. Duvon may be ending it off with that move flank, but of course Tsubaki could just swap into something like that Mushuk. That doesn't feel too bad, but Nidrasil most likely not able to do too, too much at the end, especially because the biggest damage maybe against that Mushuk would be like a Narco, one prio hit, allergic spread. I mean, Nidrasil kind of slow overall, so all the Duvon's tempts and will outspeed, but no, Valash stayed in as he just trying to eat a Oshi Dashi to the face. Oh, yeah, this is looks a bold. Like this, th this is died in the bull Ronin in plays. Once again, what, what did I say? It's like, you know, you stare death in the face and you say, no, I want a madness buff. Take me out. And uh, like, he definitely got punished for it this time. But <laughs> once again, it's, it's a similar sort of keeping people honest thing. Chungusta's OX is for it too. So, oh man, just Im imagine just straight up leaving your Valish in there to madness buff in front of the <laughs> no you like that. Those are, this is what no fear looks like. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you had to do it. You had to do it. You're a little bit behind. That would be a huge, huge tempo swing back into Duvon's favor. However, Subaki did not overthink it. Press the green buttons on that Valash. You know, most players would be like, what? A Valash? There's no way it's going to stay in. Let's just go ahead and get some good damage on move flank. But yeah, not a, you know, not a no more player on both sides, keeping things straightforward. But yeah, I would say a majority of players would have just attacked Mooflang, expecting the Valash to swap out to potentially the Mashuk to eat it Oshi Dashi. But uh, well done, Nusubaki. Does catch the Valash. And I, I respect Duvon for the attempt, trying to trying to read the overread, perhaps. But it did not go his way. Yeah, no. Uh, trying, to, trying to mind game is always something you want to do, but it can blow up in your face in that kind of an instance there. Uh, it's always a bad thing to see a Tim not gain any value. That's a huge backward step for Duvon, but is the momentum that he gained earlier with Hedgen enough to keep him up there? The fact that Jungustus ox for that as well is actually really handy because it means that Hedgen's got some more space to live here. I don't know if um, Mashuk's... Actually, no, it's pro Mashuk's probably able to take it down from here from 23%. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, I spoke too soon. <laughs> <laughs> like 2 HP. The yeah. Living there. And that is very, very important there. Hedging goes first all the time. So you are able to get a final attack. 0.7% is what it lives on. So Mashuk, maybe not enough attack TVs on this box room right there. But hey, either way, as we said, a little digital attack most likely coming into that Mashuk spot. Not too bad. I mean, Fire Tornado, the biggest attack Hedgen has, is already offline. So, yeah, I think Hedgen maybe just goes down swinging, unless he wants to save it for... No, I think this you want the Hedgen for the Mashuk, so maybe you just leave it in and try to go down swinging. Yeah, Hedgen is by far the best option that he has, but uh, Tsubaki's recognizing that as well and is trying to keep that safe as uh, instead he brings out the... Uh, Kinu for one more buff. I'm pretty sure if this is a plasma beam onto that, that Kinu is just going down. And yeah, it's just uh, another plasma beam into that, getting some value out of Kinu before it hits the ground. And the execution whiffs. What are some of these reads? Yeah, I mean, let's try to think about it. I guess he was trying to uh, execution the Mashuk, but I mean, 
Okay, okay, fair enough. Maybe you're just trying to execution the Mashuk there. Yeah, if you're expecting the Mashuk to stay in, then I suppose that's reasonable. If you don't expect it to kill, because you don't really want the Mashuk to keep doing things, but uh, damn, it's it's always unfortunate to see a Mish uh, such a high hold move whiff like that. Yeah, and it's at plus five speed too. But yeah, move flank overexerted. Noxalato coming in. I believe Narcoleptic hit is online. Wolfie's about the only Tempton that can eat that really well. Mashuk in the back line, most likely going down to a simple attack like that. But Yowler being ignored this entire matchup. Value after value, turn after turn. Yowler, easily MVP of game number two. I don't see a way for Duvon to take down this big old bear. Let's see if he can, though. See the Hellfire come out um, as we get one last laugh from Hedgen before it explodes. Uh, and we see the Mashuk come in, swapping in to eat this acid reflex. I don't know if that was just a good read or just um, like attempting to sacrifice the Mashuk into the Narc hit because uh, like he didn't want any damage on the move flank or the Volfi, which are better into a lot of the things here. Obviously, Volfi is kind of hard into Box Shroom and Nox Lottle, but it's still like hitting the stamina bars for these Thames is still a fine thing right now. And it's it like it's not like Yowler can afford to swap out. Yeah, this was a tough decision for Duvon. You could bring the Volfi in, but I believe Yowler has Oshi Dashi online. So that Volfi at uh, Yowler at plus two attack, looking to take down this Volfi in a single attack. So plague on the Noxalato. And man, this ignore the Yowler game plan. I don't think will be working out for Duvon in this game number two. Uh, yeah, it's looking very concerning here. He is putting some pressure into it, um, but it doesn't really matter if you're hitting it or not at this point it's just going to delete you as once again we see another tem bite the dust to a single oshidashi as duvon's board state is rapidly just vanishing uh tsubaki has definitely turned this game around due to the fact that duvon has not focused his his uh aggression accordingly yeah so much so i almost feel like duvon should ban the yaller but he can't let the nod guys get away which is a tough decision there but well, that would be GG, I believe, Subaki with a commanding win in that game number two. So, hey, just in true fashion of some competitive Temtem, we are heading over to a game number three. And this is it, legit, the very last game of this entire tournament. You guys there in. So, hey, the floor is yours for just a minute, uh, quarter. I'll be right back. Fantastic. Uh, I, I hope you refresh well. In the meantime, as we're getting in here, uh, obviously, we've seen that Tsubaki's team is uh, very, like, w w we don't need to beat around the bush here. It's a very challenging nut to crack. And we've seen a lot, as we've seen in previous metas, it's been very hard for people to gain ground against it. Immediately, the moment we come in, the Nagais is banned once again, folks. I'm wondering if we're going to see the Mashuk ban again, if we're going to see the Fire Koji again, which did seem like it was very valuable the last time it happened, given how much Tsubaki was relying on things that the Fire Koji could have done a lot to take down. We haven't seen the OCR at all, and no, like, banning out of Toxics either, which is something that I'm kind of curious about looking in on this. Uh, right, so we do see the Fire Koji ban again. So this is so far functionally identical to the last time we've seen this. As oh, just as I mentioned that Duvon is hovering over this Osiara, which has been ignored all through this, but uh, he's, he's just jumping right back up there. I'm wondering whether that might be something in there if you can like ban get a board state, like maybe, maybe have that as your second blue pick and try to like bait out the um, like Kinu Yowler again so that way you can ban another toxic and just have like Osiara into a board that doesn't resist Osiara. Hey, Quarter, thank you so much. I am back. So, okay, I'm see, I see. I heard what you're saying. So, hey, Subaki going with the Fire Koj ban once again. All right, respecting the Fire Koj. But, man, yep. Subaki dominated. I won't say dominated, but worked really well for game number two. Hey, if it wasn't broke, might as well go for it one more time. Kinu Yaller starting it off for Subaki. What can he do? I mean... Did he try the Mashuk Valash already, or is this going to be something new he might be going at? I think it was a hedge in last game, right? Yeah, he went for the hedge in last time. The Valash is going to be a bit easier to... Like, it's kind of a guaranteed madness buff turn one here. Uh, unless, I don't know, we see the very rarely used turn one clinch, which isn't usually enough to actually punish... Uh, 
Valish enough as we saw in the Shiznix game, for example. Uh, like, people just don't click those buttons. But, um... Yeah, no, Valash doesn't seem unreasonable here. Uh, I, st I still kind of like... The, the problem is, Tabaki's got so many toxics that the magnificent horse that has risen so much since the last patch just doesn't feel very good into this team at all. Like, there's too many toxics to ban. We got four of them, uh, which just means that you're always... Sorry, three of them. I can count. Honest. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> that just makes it that much harder to work around when you're already banning the guys. So, the Valish does wind up getting picked here instead. And uh, it's looking like we got a Gallus hover over here. Given the aloe vera, it is banned again. Yeah, not too bad. I mean, it did wonders for him in game number one. Not going to be found in game number two or game number three. So, hey, if you don't have a clean answer for these Toxic Temptems, you might have to ban one of them. So, hovering over the Noxalato could choose the Ninja So as well. But Ninja So is, a, it is weak to the Fire Temptem in Hedgen. So, I think Noxalato is a perfect ban for Duvon. And hey, I'm wondering here, I guess Madness Buff has to be the go-to. But um, mm, yeah. I wonder if you dumpled Yowler, I know this is wrong, but I'm just thinking out loud. If you double Yowler with like Waste, Water, Crystal Spike, does that bring it to like 50 so that you could double again? Or I don't think it will with that Kinu buff, right? Yowler's a little bit too thick. My concern is more what's going to be coming in after the fact, right? Like going Mashuk Valish is basically inviting um the other mashuk to come in and start uppercutting the bejesus out of this valish alongside a yowler that's going to be hitting back right like this feels like duvon has to go into like a buff and bounce as we enter our final game here because like when you're setting up this win condition you've got a lot of space turn one but then chungustus is ready to swing its big boy moves around and you can't be here for that yeah, very true. So might as well get buffed up while you can. As you said, clinch not very not common in these parts of town. So Valash, a free madness buff, it feels that way. Kinu, maybe becoming the Mashuk, as you mentioned. Oh, the Ragnet. Interesting into a Valash. This All is actually right. the first time we've seen the Ragnet be used. And it's kind of a curious one here because um I, I don't know how much that's gonna be doing into this board. Correct me if I'm wrong, but like Ragnet's slow as balls, and like while it while it sa while it sucks electric attacks into itself with electric Asodian, or it's got kinetic transfer, like P Jab and Hypno don't feel like they're gonna be doing too much here unless the P Jab outspeeds. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think this is just hey, attack me instead of the Yowler game plan for Subaki trying to bait a big, big crystal spike because the crystal spike at plus two special attack most likely will bring the Ragnet down with a single blow. So I think Subaki is trying to bait the Volash to go there. But at the same time, I mean, that would favor, yeah, that would favor Subaki either way because Oshi Dashi, as you mentioned, second turn online, Volash goes down no matter what. So, I mean, whoever he targets here, I believe Duvon has to swap out this Volash. But this is just the so, power of Yowler. There's no good swap outs here. Oh, no, I forgot it got this move. Huge. Oh no, so did Duvan. As the cage comes down, Valash is trapped. It doesn't get any momentum off this turn, meaning that we don't get any Ragnate kill. This is looking like an Oshidashi straight into the Valash, and once again, it's just out of here. That this is, is a right. massive. Yeah, that was disastrous. Forward. Disastrous of a turn for Duvan. Completely slipped in his mind. That cage is on Ragnet. And you know, I knew Subaki was up to something. Why would you bring a Ragnet into a Madness Buff Valash? That is exactly what he was up to. And he just took down one of the biggest hitters in that Valash. And one of the cleanest answers to the Ragnet. Volfi doesn't have any Earth Techniques on just yet. Man, I don't want to say anything too soon. But huge momentum for Subaki-chan. And the Hedgen doesn't feel particularly comfortable coming back in here either. Like, sure, the Mashuk probably takes down the Ragnet, but, like, Hedgen's just gonna get suplexed into the Shadow Realm all the same, right? Like, Chungustus isn't getting burned here from Plasma Beam, so there's not much actually keeping Hedgen safe against the onslaught of what Tsubaki's running here. Uh, the... Okay, the Plasma Beam might save things. Now, I think the Ragnet's still going down. 
Yeah, not too bad. Maybe went with the one prior electric punch, but as you said, Savage Suplex, that's still able to go off, but decided oh. to go onto the Mashuk before the Tireless gets a little bit out of hand, so bring it down to 20%. One more attack, most likely, from this Kinu could bring it down. And I That's say Kinu cool. only because he's been buffing up uh, Sean Gustus this entire match here, or series. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's definitely something we've seen Tsubaki do a lot, is just rely on the sheer uh, consistency of Kinu and Yowler and the degree to which they support each other inside a chamomile situation. Like, even when you don't get that first buff, or even when you find it hard to necessarily acquire those buffs in the right way, um, just having those available at these per appropriate moments in time and being able to constantly gain momentum just by, like, solidifying this Yowler as an indestructible force, it's just such a hard thing to be able to face. Yeah, very, very tough. And hey, that's after a little nerf coming on to Yowler. But I don't know. I don't want to say the stats should be a little bit nerfed. But we all know Yowler has some fantastic stats. Well, let's see. I don't want to speak too soon. Duvon still in this. is only nice and early. Turn number four. Did lose to Valash. But Subaki did lose to Ragnar. Let's see how it plays out. Hedgen, what do you got for the side of Duvon? Okay. Mashuk swapping out for the neutral Mooflane. Okay, maybe Generify here. Oh, yeah, no, Generify could make sense. Additionally, um, this, uh, like, I was concerned that that was just, like, you know, taking the L and eating a beta burst that was intended for um, Mashuk, but then I remember that Tsubaki tends to try to just keep his board state up rather than leave his Kinu vulnerable at any one time. And it, this just reloads the railgun of uh, buffing Yowler as well. Yeah, not too bad. And hey, didn't go for the Generify with that neutral Temtem. So maybe has a, a, available right here. Get that Bamboozle. Saving his Hedgen from taking some damage. However, Hedgen has been on the board for two turns. So Fire Tornado is online. Tsubaki has to, of course, know that. So the only reasonable thing to do will have to be that Mashuk. So kind of a straightforward play. Duvam has to decide how to play this out. Jungustus, I believe I have the stamina bug on my side because... Um, oh, yeah, no. Jungustus is at 47.5% stamina mm -hmm. on my screen. So it looks like that that sneaky little stamina bug still there. Entirely visual, but it'll catch people off guard. And, um, yeah, no, it looks like it's per in a perfectly good situation to just keep throwing moves around. But we'll see what Tsubaki winds up doing. All right, so maybe if he threw the fire tornado, at least Kinu will be taken care of. So no more protector buffs for the remainder of this series. Uh, Goring does fly onto Kinu. And okay, Plasma Beam, not enough. And 7.9, a little bit out of the range. So Kinu gets to live for one more time and get off another protector buff if he chooses to do so. Could, of course, sacrifice if he wants. But man, I want to say, I mean... It's because he doesn't have a lot of damage to do on Yowler. But you have to try to take down Yowler before he starts setting up. But to be fair, he wouldn't have accomplished too much either way because of those hibernates. So it's kind of like pick your poison here. Uh, Subaki's just making it very rough for Duvon's team here. This is why one of the best things that people have used in the past to attend to the threat that is Yowler is not hitting it in its actual sort of health or stamina values, but instead lowering its attack through consistent tendernesses or toxic plumes or other debuffs like that to make it regret staying on the field, forcing a swap, removing all those defensive buffs because Chamomile resets everything when you come back in. Uh, this is the main way in which people have declawed Yowler in the past, and it's not something we've seen this tournament at all. Yeah, very true. It looks like Wastewater taking the priority over Tenderness on these on these Thames like Mashuk. I mean, Tenderness could be run on Mooflink, but Kinu looks like it stayed in. And hey, if it went for a sacrifice and Hedgen went first, I'm very impressed. But Base Jump bringing down the Yowler a little bit more, but Savage Suplex 100. Not down just yet, so okay. All right. Hedgen's been able to live these before. It's been able to live exactly one of them, but it really puts it in an awkward position. And now if Tsubaki just brings in the Mashuk, then Duvan's once again in a position where he kind of wants to pressure with the Hedgen, but he also wants to keep the Hedgen in the back for Nidrasil. Uh, Tsubaki's been very good at sort of uh, forcing Duvan to choose what he actually spends his time focusing on and diverting attention from the actual threat. 
and not too bad bringing out the nurse so i believe fire tornado was not used that was a simple plasma beam on the kinu previously so fire tornado still online which pressures out that nitter soul. So I think Subaki is just saying attack the fire tornado here. Don't send it over to the Yaller. I'm going to swap in the Mashuk. Does Duvon want to read it? And maybe does decide to go for the Yaller. But that's plus three special defense. So it just feels bad. It's a feels bad moment when you have to do very little damage. When you have such a big attack like that. Hmm. Do you still just send it into the Mashuk for bigger damage perhaps? Um, it's a tough thing to say, like, as you've said in the past, Duvan's tactic of ignoring the Yowler and trying to focus on everything in the other slot has not served him well in the past, and it's kind of just left Yowler with a free board in which to play, but, um, like, if, if, he, if he isn't focusing it like he is right now, then it's just capable of showing off like this and just becoming even more of a powerhouse. Now, that said, that was a pretty cool swap, making sure that it was able to avoid the, uh, um, poison that would have taken out Hajin through the Volthy, but um, uh, it's just coming at the cost of this. Y'all are still basically being uncontested. Yeah, 100% making matters worse. Plus two attack, double damage on the already impactful Yaller. So as we saw before, Ashi oh, Dashi goes a little bit too burr on this Volthy. So Duvon has to be considered that. Does he want to swap in? Maybe just a sacrificial Mashuk, perhaps. Mashuk? not the most not the best tempt for the remainder of the team so i could see just throwing the mashuk away for right now bait out the ashi dashi and then bring volvi back in to try to overexert either yowler or the ninja so later on i see what duvon has in mind i mean you can overexert the yowler now but you're going down if you do so or you get the kill on nid okay overexert seems to be the way to go Yup, nope. Hitting blue bar is definitely something, and it's uh, now that the uh, immunity is gone from Yaller, it's possible to hit it more effectively, but Tsubaki is staying on top of this and is trying to make sure that he doesn't fall to these traps. Uh, the fact that uh, on top of that, the Nidrasil did not go down to that base jump is just unfortunate for Devon. Missing those kinds of uh, KOs can be such a, you know, a killjoy when you're playing an aggro team and you need things to go down. Yeah, absolutely. I thought he was maybe going to double, but he was trying to overexert. But man, Subaki always seemingly one step ahead. You know, I don't think he read the bush because bush wasn't even online. He just read the plague pressure onto the Yowler. So it just simply rested to not cost him any kind of HP. Brilliant play for Subaki. Uh, you wouldn't expect a simple rest to do so much in this uh, predicament. However, Wolfie now has bush. So does Subaki want to click Ashi Dashi or is he just going to show off perhaps rest one more time? Okay, let's see if he's going to go for it. Okay, so the mind game is there. Does, is this the Ashi Dashi turn that we've been looking for? No, it's the mind game. The rest happens again as he's trying to keep his stamina up. And in the meantime, all of this damage is just coming in. Yes, there's a hibernate that's available, but at this point, it's just uh, Chungustus and Boxroom, and there's still a Hedgen that's there to take out a large amount of Boxroom's health. Uh, it's it's still kind of an awkward one, though, because one hit from this Yowler, and that Volfi is just going screaming into the distance. And at that point, uh, Duvon's basically just got two Thames with under 20% left. Like, it looks like Duvon's in the lead here, but that could very quickly swing backwards as Tubaki's, you know, giving ground so he can snap back as hard as possible. Yeah, we'll see. Of course, Duvon trying to bait that bush to come out. Or no, Tubaki's trying to bait the bush. Not bait the bush, but trying to ignore the bush instead of wasting that Ashidashi. So Duvon trying to bait the Ashidashi. It won't really change too much. Mashuk being on the board, if Ashidashi doesn't connect to it, uppercut actually wait a second y'all are slow enough if wolfie goes for a bush uppercut breaks the bamboozle ashi dashi goes in and kills it with one shot i'm not too sure i mean final two temps temptants for subaki but i believe subaki might have just got it guaranteed we will see does vortex 55 all right about 10 percent or so over exerting himself Yeah, no, it looks like uh, it looks like the combination of damage that we're seeing here is still enough that 
we're still going to see the same state, but just in a slightly different way. The problem is, uh, Mashok is still a really good way to take care of Volfi. Uh, something that has kind of slipped, at least my mind here, um, rather than anything else that's going on, just due to the fact that Mashok, like, you know, we, we've got all this focus on other things here when um, we've got a Mashok that's perfectly capable of cleaning up the rest of this board now that there's finally been all of this damage on Chungusta. Yeah, absolutely. I believe if Hedgen had a bit more HP, maybe it would be possible for Duvon, but Mushroom or Mushook being at 100% HP, that's a little bit too tall of a task to ask from this little old Hedgen. But hey, step number one, a big boy Yowler has been taken care of, but the Hedgen going down to a simple toxic tick. And I believe Wolfie will be going down to a simple uppercut this next turn. And Wolfie doesn't really have enough in the gas tank to go big for a back-to-back -back DV or anything like that. This would go 77% all the way. Okay, that was some big damage, but uppercut. And there we go, yeah, ladies and enough. gents. We have ourselves a tournament champion. And his name, he's no stranger to success here. Tsubaki Chan is our Airborne Archipelago Qualifiers number one champion.